world's highest hell Occupy my lowly heart Own it all and reign supreme Conquer every rebel power Let no vice or sin remain That resists your holy war You have loved and purchased me Make me yours forevermore I was blinded by my sin Had no ears to hear your voice Did not know your love within Had no taste for heaven's joys Then your spirit gave me life Opened up your word to me Through the gospel of your Son Gave me endless hope and praise Yes, you did Help me now to live That's dependent on your grace Keep my heart and guard my soul From the evils that I face Good evening, everyone. Welcome. We hope you are uh, having a good evening. Uh, I know that uh, this has been a season where there's been a lot of bad news, uh, pretty much bad news. Uh, so I wanted to start this evening by actually saying that I have some good news, um, some very unexpected news. Um, my wife and I just found out that we are actually having our fourth child. Uh, my wife is pregnant. Uh, she is going to be due uh, in December. Uh, we are, yeah, yeah, you knew. You knew, right? Everybody, you knew. Uh, yeah, April Fools. Anyways, welcome. Glad that you're here. If I got you, you got to let me know. I got a few of you, didn't I? Anyway, welcome. We're glad that you're here with us tonight. Uh, the purpose of this, uh, this Wednesday Night Live, as I'm calling it tonight, is just to encourage you uh, and to encourage me even uh, in this strange season that we are in. We aren't able to connect in the same ways. We're not able to see each other the same ways. So we're not able to encourage one another in the same ways. And so I'm hoping that tonight will be just, just a chance for me to reach out to you and offer you some encouragement. I've been reflecting um, in recent days about all that has been happening over the last several weeks. And uh, obviously a lot of thoughts have been coming to mind uh, but one thing I wanted to highlight tonight uh, that I feel like, oh, my wife is calling me. She shouldn't be, doesn't she? Doesn't she? Let me see. Maybe she has something important to say. Honey, I'm on the air. Oh, hear. You can't hear it? I don't know. Might be. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Love you. But <clears throat> get my notes back. Um, yeah. Hey, if you're having problems, I guess you can call me. I'll try it. I don't know how many I can take. Uh, I don't have any questions I can can feel. Anyway, uh, so anyway, I've been reflecting a lot on what has been going on and some kind of trying to get some perspective on this. And one of the things that I think God has been revealing to me, impressing upon me in recent days, uh, is how this entire situation shines a spotlight on our weakness. That what we see going on here uh, is something that is highlighting our weakness. Uh, now, of course, we are also seeing our strength in a lot of tremendous ways. Um, I think about the doctors and the nurses and the different professionals who are necessary in terms of them doing what they do uh, to keep us going, to keep us safe, many of them taking risks 
um, to to keep us safe. Uh, people working in the grocery store uh, that they're they're going to work and they don't know what kind of dangers there are involved there. Uh, and we're grateful for the courage and the strength that we see there. So we definitely see our strength in this. But I think when you when you pull back and you look at it from the big picture, what this really uh, puts a spotlight on is our weakness, humanity's weakness. You know, we we live or have lived in an age of, I think, great confidence, uh, humanity in many respects, I would say we've become a little bit arrogant, uh, very confident in ourselves. I mean, I just not that long ago, I was reading a book. I was reading in a number of different places, uh, looking ahead to the future, looking ahead to the next hundred years. And some people making these incredible predictions, which still could be true. I don't know. Uh, predictions about how, how we will be able to live much longer, be able to live into our hundreds that with the advances in medical technology and all kinds of other different types of technology that, you know, we might be able to live to not just know our grandchildren or great grandchildren or great, great grandchildren, but, but we could live a lot longer that, you know, humanity is we're, we're conquering nature, right? We're showing ourselves to be sort of victorious over the things that have held us back. And then all of a sudden, just within, a, a, you know, a couple months ago, it's like, we've been thrust back into the dark ages. All of a sudden, the greatest achievement of man, the greatest discovery of humanity is soap and water, right? I mean, we've got the, the technology for stealth bombers. Uh, we've got technology to fly remote control drones. I mean, we, we can do all kinds of things, but all of a sudden, our, our greatest weapon is soap and water. It's like what what has happened, and I think in many respects, what it's done is it's humbled us. We've seen our weakness. We we we've seen uh, ourselves become paralyzed by this. I think about what many of our world leaders we've we've seen them truthfully just paralyzed, not having any idea what to do in in our current circumstances. I was talking with a medical professional who has to make decisions for the hospital that he works in, and and he just said he's like he's like Kevin there's so much we just don't know. We don't really even know what to do. And so in many respects, I think this whole situation has really put a, spy, uh, a, a spotlight on our weakness. Uh, if, if I'm honest with you, I think it's, I've seen this in myself. It's highlighted my own weakness, right? I, I in all honesty, there have been times in the last couple of weeks when I've been afraid, when fear and anxiety has crept in uh, quite frankly, I had to stop watching the news. I have not been watching the news nearly as much as I was before because it was creating a significant amount of anxiety and all sorts of uncertainty. I don't know if you've been experiencing this, but in certain uncertainty on how to respond, right? There are, there are moments when I feel like I'm being just, you know, overly cautious. I'm, I'm panicking and I'm, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm not afraid to go around anybody or touch anything. And, but then there are other times when I wonder, am I being cautious enough, right? So there's all kinds of uncertainty, and I think it really highlights uh, a weakness. And it's in that light that there's a particular passage in the book of 2 Corinthians, which I think can be very encouraging. Because in this passage, which I'm going to read here in just a minute, the Apostle Paul highlights his own weakness. And the context is uh, he... He has some. He refers to his thorn in the flesh, and it's something, something that in him that some sort of hardship that he's going through. We don't know exactly what it is that he's dealing with, what it is that he's referring to when he talks about this thorn in the flesh. But he's referring to some sort of hardship that he's going through, and and he talks about how he asks God to take this away. He asks God to take this hardship out of his life, and and let me. Let me read this to you. This is 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. We're going to put it up on the screen. It says this. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 
Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it from me. But he said, my grace is sufficient for me. This is, I think, hopefully to you, some incredible encouragement. What we discover in this is something very important about God, and that is that God's power is revealed in our weakness. That in our weakest moments is actually when we can often experience God's power and God's grace the most. You know, there's a a great story in the book of Judges, and the people of Israelites, um, or the, the Israelites, they are they're in a very difficult season. They're facing all kinds of hardship. They are surrounded by different peoples, uh, all kinds of uh, ites, Amalekites, Midianites, all kinds of peoples that are causing all kinds of havoc, wreaking all kinds of havoc in the lives of the Israelites. And there comes this point when the Israelites are able to finally put together an army, and it's on the eve of this battle where they're getting ready to fight, and their leader, Gideon, is is about to take them into battle. And then God does the strangest thing. He says to Gideon, he says, hey, your army's too big. And he says, I want you to send some of your army home. So Gideon asks them, he says, you know, if you're afraid, you can go home. So a lot of them all went home. And so then the army was decreased. And and God's like, no, that's still not enough. And so then he does this weird thing where he has the army go down to this body of water and he tells them to get a drink of water. And then Based on how they drink the water, he uses that to determine who should stay and who should go home, and the ones who drink a certain way go home. And so it gets whittled down to this tiny little army, and then God takes them, and he leads them to victory. And the point, the point of it is that it's in their weakness they come to realize that God is at work. They see God's power, and they see God's strength in the midst of their weakness. Friends, this is, of course, what we see when we look at Easter. Here we are just a couple of weeks away from celebrating Easter. And Easter is this celebration of God's power, this incredible demonstration of God's power in raising Jesus from the dead. But, of course, what is it that leads to that? What is it that leads to Easter morning? It's Good Friday. It's Jesus on the cross. It's Jesus in this complete place of vulnerability in this complete place of weakness. And so then we see this as paradigmatic for how we experience God, that oftentimes the way in which you will experience the power and the presence of God the most is precisely in our times of weakness. You know, as Christians, we we should not allow difficulties and hardships to catch us off guard. We should be surprised by that, uh, precisely because oftentimes in that is when we are going to see God at work. Friends, there has been so much uh, and so much that is going on right now that is very discouraging. But my hope for you is, is this, the positive that we can see in this is that perhaps this is a season when we can experience God in ways that we haven't before. I want to encourage you to do that. I want you to look at the challenges that you're facing. And then I also want you to look and see, is it possible that God might be looking to use that to reveal his power to you because his power is made perfect and is revealed to us in the midst of our weaknesses. If you'll all sing with me, if you uh, are able, would love for you to do that. We're going to sing a song which, just to sort of close here, which I believe emphasizes precisely what I'm talking about here. Before I do so, uh, let's pray. Dear God, we come before you this evening and we pray that you would impress this upon our hearts, this reality uh, that in our weaknesses, we find your strength. Uh, God, we pray that right now, in this season, when we are facing so much challenge, God, that we would find you. God, that you would use this, that these difficulties would not be wasted and we would see your power at work. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This song may be new to many of you. Uh, Just go ahead and listen, and as you become familiar with it, you can sing along. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. 
He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to Him. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing. All is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, the Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley He will lead. Oh, the night has been won. And I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can sing, I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Amen. Have a great night.